What's up ladies and gentlemen and welcome to this POV review by Autotop and Owl. My name is Max and today we are taking a look at the all new BMW i7. This is a 60x drive and it is the most powerful i7 you can get today. A faster version is coming, an i7 M70. But this for now is the most potent version. And today we're going to check out what this car is. It is of course the new flagship by BMW. It is the electric seven series. They are also coming with a petrol and a diesel version, which is basically the same car. This car has been developed from the get go to have like both an electric drivetrain and a petrol and diesel version. So there are a couple of hybrids like an M60e, but also a 740d with a 300 horsepower six cylinder diesel engine with like probably a thousand kilometers of range, which is pretty damn nice if you ask me. So this is quite a difficult car for me to review because I need to stay objective. Well, relatively speaking, I need to stay kind of objective. I can still, you know, tell you guys what I think and feel, but still it needs to be based on facts. And I really don't like this car. I've seen some comments recently that you guys think that we are BMW top and L and that we only do BMWs and uh, that, that we don't like anything else. But the thing is BMW makes a lot of good cars, uh, I think. And on top of that, BMW in the Netherlands is also the best importer of the Netherlands because they always have every model available for us to test and film. And that is not the case with other importers. And also the applications from you guys, from our viewers to drive your cars are also a lot of BMWs. So yeah, there is a lot of BMW going on, but I really feel with my BMW heart because I do love BMWs. I feel like this is the wrong direction. I really, really don't like where BMW is going with this car because the 7 Series used to be like a car for the arrived gentleman that had, you know, has had a nice life. He wants a comfortable car to drive, but it's still a BMW. It still drives like a BMW. It looks distinguished. Uh, it looks like, you know, you're a man of taste and you are someone who appreciates a good car, a, a well handling car, even though it is big. Uh, our 750i that we own of the previous generation is a perfect example of that because it looks good, it sounds amazing, it drives really well, it's still comfortable, it has all the leather you want, but it's still a distinguished car. It's still, even though it has that massive grille at the front, I mean, compare that, compared to this, that car is freaking subtle as hell. And uh, with this car, BMW have chosen to go in a different direction. The car is absolutely massive. It's five meters, 39 centimeters long. That is so huge. Uh, it's only available in this like three meter plus. It's like three meter 12, I think, wheelbase. So it's only available with the biggest wheelbase. If you park this car next to like a hatchback, it looks like a freaking Rolls Royce Phantom. It really does. It's, it's very high. The front is very high. The roof is high, the rear is high. The nose is just hideous. It, it's really not a good looking car if you ask me. And there are a few reasons for that. One, uh, it needs to be aerodynamic, which usually does not give you the most pretty car. But also 45% of 7 Series are sold in China. And the average age of a 7 Series buyer in the US and Europe is 55 but the average age of a Chinese 7 Series buyer is 37. So you have most of the, almost half of the 7 Series go to China to an audience that is way younger and that, that really wants like flashy stuff, electronics, gimmicks, displays, freaking Swarovski crystals in your headlights. I mean, who the f cares? <laughs> I mean, oh, I, I, I don't, yeah, it's it's uh, it's difficult for me to see where BMW is going with this. And if you thought the grill on our 7 Series was big, look at this thing. I mean, this is bigger than a newborn baby. It's massive. Well, it's bigger than a three-year-old. It's so huge. So is the logo right there. Uh, this does have an M Sport pack, so you get like black stuff in the bumpers and more aggressive stuff. Uh, I think that this car really needs a chrome delete. So if you have everything in black with a beautiful color like this Tanzanite, I do think that this is the best color combo for this car because it makes it look a bit less huge. 
You can also go for 12 and a half thousand euros uh, a two-tone paint, which I admittedly have to say I, I quite like <laughs> because I think like if you go if you go for something like this, why not go balls to the wall and just go for the most obnoxious spec. Uh, 21 inch wheels with Bridgestone Terenza. Behind that we've got the M brakes apparently, M Sport brakes, M Sport wheels as well. Suspension is air suspension of course and it is stabilized, actively stabilized by a 48 volt system which also cancels out vibrations. It also has rear wheel steering so it actually feels a lot less big uh, when you're on the road, in sport mode at least. The rear is super high, we've got these narrow rear lights and I think that is kind of why I don't really like the car because you have a lot of real estate, there's a lot going on and then you have like the, these sliver headlights. Yeah, and sliver rear lights, it's not really my thing. So trunk space is very big, it's a lot of trunk space, it's quite deep, quite wide, so that I guess is a benefit of having a car that is so big. And then you have all these like weird shapes, triangles everywhere, why are those triangles there? What, what is this? I don't understand it. I feel like a grandpa that's trapped in the wrong day and age and that is a is not a great feeling um, before I open that door let me just show you another gimmick on this car so this is the configurable button on the key and I have configured it to open all four doors because that is something you want on your 7 series so keep that button pressed all doors open Apparently that is something that people want in their car right now. Press it and they close. Why? Okay, so let's check out the interior. We're going to do the rear seat later on when I'm going to uh, cover the passenger experience of this car. We will do that later on. So first I'm going to cover the driving experience, then I'll switch with Martijn and I'll sit in the rear and uh, we can check out the massive screen that is hiding up there. So if you get into this car and you have the automatic door option, you just hit the brake pedal and the door closes. You can also open them by clicking that button and close it again as well. But interior wise, there's a lot going on here and I feel a bit overwhelmed when I sit here. This wood, I quite like that. <laughs> that kind of gives away uh, my, my likes and dislikes. But anyway, I like that wood. I don't like basically everything else. So, so as I said, there's a lot going on. You've got your center console here. Everything is shiny. So you've got this gloss black with this crystal hideousness uh, that is just shining and, and reflecting all over. So all this stuff, oh, I don't know if you guys can see that properly, but all that colored stuff is reflection and it sometimes hits your eye. You have crystal seat buttons, but they wanted to keep it clean like this. So you can only do the basic seat operation stuff with these buttons. If you want to do more, you have to go into the iDrive, which I don't like. There are a few buttons still left. If you want to open all blinds, for instance, so you have this button here, you think like, oh, I'll, I'll press that button. No, you have to go in here and then you can open all blinds. So they have a button, but just one. So you have to press that and go into there to activate it. There is a Bowers and Wilkins audio system, which is amazing. And then you have this light bar that runs across the car in this weird diamond pattern with a light behind that, that flickers. It, 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 it is a lot to take in, honestly. We do have this gorgeous merino leather in Tartufo, which is beautiful. The seats are massively comfortable. They are super soft. They are big. Leather everywhere. A bit of wood on the headrest as well. You don't seem to be able to, to uh, adjust the headrests anymore. So front to rear, you can only do them up and down, which is a shame. But the leather is beautiful and is everywhere. So all merino leather and then this suede 
headliner, which is also very, very pretty. Yeah, the material use is just top notch with this car. It really is. Everything feels very nice and soft. It's squishy even up here, which I really like for some reason. This is also nice and soft. Yeah, this is very nice leather. And then down here, you've got a wireless charging pad and you've got a couple of cup holders. So as I said, we've got the new iDrive system, which we've covered before. I'm not a big fan of this because there are just a lot of apps in here and I find myself searching for basically everything all the time. And that was not the case with the previous iDrive system, which worked really well, if you ask me. I think that was the best system ever. And this is just, it's, it's too much. It's, it's like an Android system with a lot of apps, but if you want to adjust something, you have to go and search the app you need, basically. And then if you found it, so if we go for that one, for instance, so if you go into the menu, you found it, and then you still have a lot of menus to go through. So you click that one and then you can do more stuff. Too many things to reach one thing and it just takes too much time. You also don't have the uh, shortcuts anymore that you used to have, like all the numbers on the dash, that's gone. All the buttons are gone on the dashboard. And you can see that with VW because the new Golf 8 also only has like a touchscreen. And with the facelift, they are bringing back buttons. Hashtag bring back the buttons. Hashtag save the manuals. Hashtag bring back the buttons because it just does not work. VW also said it does not work. We made a mistake. We're bringing back the buttons. Please BMW bring back. But so that's a wow. That's a lot of bees. Please BMW bring back the buttons. It's like a tongue twister. Bring back the buttons, BMW. Anyway, I feel like I'm droning on about this. Let's go and take it for a drive. It is a massive car, as I said. It's very big, it's very heavy, and the suspension is very, very soft. So, when you drive it in this... Oh, don't get me started on these idiotic driving modes. But anyway, if you drive it in personal, what the hell is expressive? How am I supposed to know what that means? Okay, so let's drive it in relax. I, I know what that means. It's a relaxed drive in a pleasant atmosphere and the seat massaging just started. Okay. So when you drive it like this, it's insanely comfortable. The car just moves around a little bit and you, you don't really feel anything that happens below you. So if you're being driven, I would say that this is a very nice car. If you're sitting in the rear with the screen, but driving it, this is just too much wobbliness. Um, it's, it's too detached. You don't feel like you're doing anything. The steering wheel is, is weirdly light and it doesn't feel like I'm turning the wheels with my steering wheel. That's maybe the best way to describe it. It feels like I'm, I'm steering the car, but I don't feel like I'm turning the wheels. That's how detached it feels sometimes. So let's go to sport. And we've got the adaptive regenerative braking, which I quite like. So it actively changes the amount of regeneration. So if you uh, approach someone in front of you or a roundabout or a corner, the car will automatically increase or decrease the amount of regeneration so that your speed is right. How do I turn off that seat massaging? That is quite annoying. Yeah. So now the air suspension tightens up and suddenly you feel like you're driving a 7 Series again. And it actually does what you ask it to do. 2700 kilos goes around the corner pretty damn well and this is the best driving mode for me because the car shrinks around you so not only do you get the full power it's a 107 kilowatt hour battery pack with two electric motors front one front one rear 544 horsepower 745 newton meters of torque so it's quite a potent car but it's mainly that driving experience that changes when you hit sport and this is like driving our 7 Series, the previous generation, in comfort mode. So you still have a bit of body control. It stays flat because of that active stabilization. And it just feels like a BMW should feel. It really does. 
it's quite an impressive thing. I'm not sure you will be able to feel where the limit of the front tires is. There it is. There it is, you can hear it. But it actually goes around that corner pretty damn impressively. But there we go, this is full throttle. Top speed is 240 kilometers an hour. Let's see if we can get there. We have 57% battery. Range is 196 kilometers. BMW claims a range of around 600 kilometers, which I mean, you would have to have the feet of an angel to be able to get there, but it is hitting the top speed and it is still delivering power, which was an issue Martijn had when he was recording the Autobahn POV that after one or two runs, it would not deliver full power. So let's see if we slow down 80 kilometers an hour. There we go. Oh, we can also use the boost. We have a pedal here. Boost, floor it. And then we have full power. Well, it's not really that quick, but... Is this full power? I'm not sure. But this is boost mode. Our GoPro has stopped working by the way, so we're just going to use this speedo on the left. It's big enough for you guys, I hope. So if you want to charge it up at a fast charger, 195 kilowatts. Uh, you can do so. It's it's not a 800 volt system. It's a 400 volt system. So you don't have like the new innovative system like Porsche has, uh, Hyundai, Kia. Uh, but you can still charge it up. I think 10 minutes, 170 kilometers. 35 minutes will give you 300 plus kilometers. So it does charge up pretty fast, but not as fast as the others. It seems like BMW and Mercedes as well are more aiming at giving you a consistent range and giving you consistent charge times instead of you know peak power and peak charging and then just a bit of a inconsistent charge so 100 to 200 we also measured that and it did 10.10 .10 seconds which is not bad because it weighs 2700 kilos and uh, it's got 544 horsepower so it's not really like a tesla it's it's much more civilized in its performance, I would say. Okay, so let's floor it once more from like 114. There we go. It's quick enough for almost all situations, I would say. It picks up nicely and then it pulls through to its top speed of 240. So now it's starting to decrease the power, as you can see on the right display there. Brakes, actually pretty, pretty decent. That's a good pedal feel and uh, it actually stops the car. So that is good with this much weight. All right, so let's switch and I'll show you guys the rear. Here we are in the back seat of the i7. Now. We've been driving this car for seven days now. The first part of the review was recorded after three days. So after seven days, I feel like we can really, you know, say something useful about this car. Walking up to it, it's not really my thing. You get in the car and again, I don't really like the interior. I think the styling is way off. You start driving it. Very comfortable, but it's not really a BMW. But then you get in the rear seat and that is when it all starts to make sense. So we've got a little display on each side and you can swipe up to unlock that. Now you can operate everything from this tablet, from this remote. So the blinds, the infotainment, uh, the lighting, the seats. So first let's start with the most important thing is getting that seat out of the way because this is what this car has been made for it really is it's one of the most impressive rear seats i have experienced in my days as a professional car tester so it goes all the way to the front and then you've got a little foot rest in there which you know i'm a bit too tall for that but for normal sized people this would be very nice and comfy oh wow 
Holy moly. Okay, so I can almost stretch my legs. <laughs> uh, weirdo. Okay, so, oh, there's a button for that, uh, which is the lounge position. So I just hit that. The headrest raises. You get a, a nice support for your legs and the seat goes up. Oh my God, that is insane. <laughs> oh, look at this. Holy moly. I honestly didn't know. Uh, we're not very good car reviewers. It's like a bed. I honestly didn't know that it would recline this much. I can even check the side mirror. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, I was wondering about that. Okay, so this is the ultimate lounge position, which is super nice. And then we go to my modes and we hit theater, which means that all the blinds go up in the rear as well. So this one is both to keep out the light, but also not to distract people behind you. And then we've got the theater screen, 31 inch wide screen. And I was wondering about the distance you have between yourself and the screen. I thought it was a bit too short, uh, but you can choose to move the screen to the right because you're sitting at the, you know, at this side, or you can go to the left if you're on the other side, or you can go in the middle if you're, you know, together. But this actually works really well. It's not too close. And this is also a touch screen, so we can go to Prime Video and then you can select whatever you want to watch. For instance, the Grand Tour, Scandi Flick. So you just hit that. I don't know why you have to enter that code all the time, but maybe it's something you can get rid of. We've got Dolby Audio. There we go. And then you've got that. Hello and welcome Amazing. to the top of Norway and specifically Powers of Wilkins Audio. the third most northerly football pitch in the entire world. Amazing. How far north are we? Really far. We're 127 miles north of the Arctic Circle. So this actually works really well uh, you've got netflix you've got youtube you've got internet disney plus games as well and you can watch formula one apparently so this truly is amazing i mean this is so comfortable it is super quiet that that detached suspension I, i've already forgotten about it because this is an amazing place to be it really is it is the best rear seat in the business right now and they have done an incredible job i've got a wireless charger as well so i can just put my phone down there and it will start charging immediately this truly is an amazing rear seat so in conclusion i know this has been a long video but we've had a lot to discuss with this car in conclusion i would say that from anywhere but the back seat the car feels a bit like a letdown it is it feels like a rolls royce light and it does a really good job at that i mean best back seat in the business no doubt but you can't really drive it hard because then it will overheat and it will limit the power if you get behind the wheel and start driving it it feels so detached so i feel like they really focused on one thing with this car and that is you know flashiness gimmicks but focusing on the rear seat they have done an exceptional job watching a movie back here would be absolutely amazing it really would and i think that is the first time because normally when you're in the back seat of a car and you're trying to watch a movie it's not really comfortable or you know like you're watching a movie at home but this feels very very close to that and yeah i think you can have a lot of fun back here don't look back if you don't want to be traumatized <laughs> And I mean, if you want to have more fun in the front as well, uh, you might have to wait for that M760E that is coming later on as well, which is a hybrid with a petrol six cylinder. So that should be a lot of fun. Stay tuned for that car. So that's it guys, hope you enjoyed it. You can subscribe by clicking the big button in the middle. You can also check out this video on the right or this playlist on the left. See you the next one, bye.